everyone, it's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of Savant's Tech Talk. Software development is a long process. It can often require a lot of iterations and rounds of testing and bug fixing before final deployment. This is where software development lifecycle can come to the rescue. Everyone from project managers to developers and system analysts can leverage this timeline to maintain efficiency and quality in their software products. In today's video, we'll look at what software development lifecycle is, why it's important, the phases of software development lifecycle, and the types of software development lifecycle. As always, if you find this topic interesting, then you can let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. You can also let us know if you find it interesting by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Seriously, tell us. Now let's jump into it. So what is software development lifecycle? A software development lifecycle, also commonly referred to as SDLC, is a collection of steps that software teams follow. And this helps them develop and maintain the software in an effective way. There are several models for software development that are generally followed. So why is a software development lifecycle important? A software development lifecycle holds a lot of significance for software teams. It's important mainly because, well, first of all, it provides developers with clear goals as to what the end result should be. And this also helps to set clear timelines for deliverables. And in turn, this type of planning prevents the risk of time and resource wastage. This reduces the complexity associated with creating new products and systems from scratch. A software development lifecycle also ensures that at every Every stage of development, proper testing is done to balance and check all software. It also maintains a clear stage progression. And it also allows teams to plan well in advance to determine the cost and budget. So now let's have a look at the phases of most software development life cycles. Most software development lifecycle models use five to seven phases for effective development. The seven major phases of software development include planning, requirements analysis, design, development and implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Now let's have a look at each of these individually. Planning. Planning is the first stage of a software development lifecycle. It requires collecting the requirements along with inputs from domain experts and stakeholders. It also ensures identifying any potential risks. Developers also conduct research and gain a thorough understanding of the customer's demands. With a clear understanding of customer feedback, pros and cons, technology stacks being used, and so on, planning helps lay a strong foundation for easy development of the product, its timeline, and potential tests and risks associated with the final service. Requirement analysis. Most software development then moves on to the creation of a software requirement specification document. And this will describe the features and specifications of the product or service that's being created. This document is shared with the stakeholders and business owners. They go over the document and may accept or reject it based on financial constraints, time limits, or requirement changes. Once the final software requirement specification document is accepted, the project can proceed to the next stage of the software development lifecycle. Design. Once the software requirement specification document has been finalized and approved, the product architects come together to create a design document specification. This describes the features of the product in detail. It also contains estimations for the budget and timeline. This provides developers with everything they need to start working on the final product or service. This document is also required to be approved by business owners, clients, and stakeholders. Like with the software requirement specification document, the design document specification might also be subject to changes until it meets the time and budget constraints of the client. Development and implementation. This is the most important phase of the software development lifecycle. It takes up most of the time and resources. Development refers to making the actual end product based on the demands presented in the design document specification. Developers have to pick the most appropriate coding language. This stage requires effective communication between members of the team and also between developers and QA testers, managers, and clients. This is the foundation of a well-made product. Testing. After the product has been developed, the software development lifecycle moves to the testing phase. And here's where QA testers try to go over the code and run it through multiple use cases to find bugs and errors. Problems are returned to the developers who then rectify the errors. Now this is a very iterative process that continues until there are no more bugs or errors found. Deployment. Once the testing is done, the product is rolled out to the market or deployed. And deployment can be done all at once or it can be done in batches. 
Maintenance. Software development doesn't end with deployment. It's important to identify how the market responds to your software. Development teams can utilize the feedback and reaction of consumers to make reports on what needs to be improved and what the users like, and sometimes even more importantly, what they don't like. This might include minor changes like a simpler or more intuitive interface, or sometimes a major overhaul, like entirely new features being added or removed. Whatever the case, these can contribute to a better upgraded version of the product. So now let's discuss some of the types of software development life cycles. Now there are a lot of different types of software development life cycle models, but we're gonna have a look at two of the most popular software development life cycle models. That would be the waterfall model and the agile model. So let's start with the waterfall model. The waterfall model is the oldest and one of the most popular development methods that's been around since the 1960s. It's still being used by many teams and organizations. The waterfall model carries out tasks in a sequential method. It consists of a set of tasks and each task is arranged in a way that the output of one is the input for the next. This incremental approach forms the basis of the waterfall method. It's pretty simple to use and is often backed with planning and documentation that allows every step of the process to be clear. Team communication is easy since the end goal is known. It also depends on a rigid plan and timeline with a lot of emphasis placed on documentation. This allows for another team to pick up the slack at any time if the need arises. So now let's look at the Agile model. The Agile model is quickly gaining popularity among organizations and development teams globally. The phases involved in an Agile software development life cycle model are planning, design, implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Large products are taken in small chunks, and the model focuses on building and continuously releasing working software in iterations. The main ideas that make up a project can change at any stage of the development cycle, so teams should be extremely flexible. This model relies on constant communication between developers and clients to identify any changes required. As a result, this model focuses less on a fixed plan and more on providing clients with actual working software. So there we have it. We've looked at what software development lifecycle is, why it's important, the phases of a software development lifecycle, and the types of software development lifecycle. Once again, if you found this video helpful or interesting, then don't forget to let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.